Howdy folks, Jamboreeki here, and welcome to a Halloween special episode of Jamboreeki Orange, the show where I let my patrons decide what I review. The options for this month's poll include it, Hocus Pocus, Frankenweenie, Monster House, It 2017, Alpha and Omega The Legend of the Sawtooth Cave, and John Carpenter's Halloween. They chose Monster House. Mr. Nebercracker is a grumpy old man who lives in a rickety house. He yells at every child that comes near his lawn, making him a very unpopular resident. His neighbor DJ is quite suspicious of him and his house. When Nebercracker has a heart attack, leaving his house unguarded, even stranger things start happening. So DJ teams up with his best friend Chowder and a prep school girl called Jenny to investigate the strange house. It turns out that the house is possessed by Nebercracker's deceased wife, Constance, who died in an accident. Children's horror is a tough nut to crack. Filmmakers have to hit a mark on the scare meter that's suitable for kids, but also creepy and tense enough for braver children out there. In my opinion, Monster House is a great example of introducing horror to younger audiences. It knows how to create atmosphere, delivering some really effective chills, like when DJ gets a phone call from Nebercracker's vacant house. It's a well-executed scene that doesn't hold back on intimidating the audience especially with the house being directly across from DJ's home, like it's staring back at him. This is a film that taps into a relatable fear for children. Neighborhood rumors that a spooky looking house is being haunted. Most of us had one, I know I did. And I love that the film doesn't dumb down the mystery of the house. There's lots of suggestive clues to indicate what's really happening without being too blatantly obvious. But characters also make assumptions based on what they learn and their guesses make sense. This is how you do a children's mystery story right. Of course, I would say that a child should be of a certain age before they're ready to watch Monster House. It is a PG movie after all. There's some menacingly sinister moments that may overwhelm more sensitive kids. I'd say wait until your child is about seven or eight before letting them watch it alone. The lead characters are very simple, almost one-dimensional. DJ the awkward nerd, Chowder the chubby comic relief, and Jenny the stuffy prep school girl but we're not supposed to enjoy them on their own. Their charisma comes from their dynamic as a team. All three are distinctly different personalities, which can lead to clashes, but there's a charm to the friendship they develop while taking on the monster house. Their experience together is a shared connection that only they will ever understand. Even if they get into fights, they know that they've got the responsibility to end the curse of the monster house, and it's this task that bonds them together. Chowder, I need you to get the house down under that crate. And the characters do grow by the end. DJ develops the confidence to do something boldly heroic, Jenny gets to leave her preppy comfort zone, and Chowder takes responsibility as a soldier against the Monster House. The world of Monster House is also livened up with a community of wacky eccentrics. Each one played by a recognizable star like Jason Lee, Catherine O'Hara, Fred Willard, John Heeder, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and much more. The supporting characters help to expand and develop this town while also being entertaining guests in the story, even if they are stock caricatures like the video game nerd or the babysitter's mean boyfriend. Some adult characters can be victims of the monster house, but others might be able to lend some helpful advice to the kids. Many of the adults roll their eyes at the children's claims of a monster house, meaning that our heroes have to solve this mystery by themselves, making them even more vulnerable and alone in their scary situation. But this also inspires us to admire them, as they manage to do so many amazing things without adult supervision, never losing their childhood innocence and imagination in the process. However, I will admit that some scenes do really challenge my ability to suspend disbelief by showing the monster house attacking victims in broad daylight, dropping its nuanced, harmless, inanimate building act in favor of creating high excitement for audiences. You'd think neighbors would see this beast going wild or at least hear the children's screams, but no 
No, nothing. The only reason most adults don't believe that the house is a monster is due to them never witnessing anything, not because they're intentionally ignoring the kids being in danger. I'm sure a lot of neighbours would actually leave their house to see what the hell was going on. Now, there is an emotional core to the horror, the tragedy of Constance, a woman who was cruelly kept in a cage and forced to perform as a fat lady at a circus, humiliated by audiences every night, but she was luckily rescued by Nevercracker after he fell in love with her. Now free, Constance became protective of her home while it was under construction, as it was a symbol for a new sense of safety and protection. Her determination to defend it led to her falling in cement, and that's how she ended up haunting the house. Because of this, there's a heartbreaking element to Nevercracker's relationship to the house. He wants to protect it, knowing that the woman he loves is possessing it, but he's also aware of how much of a threat the house is, so he feels a duty to destroy it. The film does a great job showing how conflicted Nebercracker is, helping us to sympathise with him and understand why he put on the whole grumpy old man act. I can't believe you do this, Mr. Nebercracker. I know that you've been protecting us all these years, but now it's our turn to protect you. Let her go. But if I let her go, I'll have no one. You can tell that this monster house curse has affected his whole life. He looks so worn out. I mean, when we go inside the house, you can see that it doesn't look well lived in. It looks more like a war shelter, a barricade for Nebercracker while he tries to ward off potential victims. That's so sad when you think about it. This all builds up to the monster house's eventual destruction, which is both satisfying and bittersweet, as we watch Nebercracker giving a farewell to his wife's fading ghost, a very powerful image that moves me on every viewing. The animation for this film was created through motion capture, a technique that translates live action actors' performances into computer animation. It's the same kind of animation that was utilised for the Polar Express. A film that I believe failed to justify the art of motion capture because his characters were too photorealistic, which just created a creepy, uncanny valley vibe. It begged the question, why didn't they just make this film in live action? Monster House, though, goes for a much more different art style by giving characters exaggerated features and quirky details. They look recognisably human, but there's a twist to their appearances that justifies the film's decision to use motion capture. Mocap is like digital makeup for actors, and Monster House demonstrates this superbly, faithfully translating live performances into vibrant animated characters, without ever reaching Polar Express's uncanny valley levels. To conclude, Monster House is a very simple film, you get what the title gives, but there's a charm to its simplicity and it's a well-crafted children's horror film with elements of dark tragedy that'll challenge kids' emotions. If you want to introduce your children to the genre of horror at an age where they're too young for more gruesome stuff, the Monster House is a film to consider. I've been Jamboreeke and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jamboreeky Orange? Well, that's entirely up to my patrons. The options for next month's poll include Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, The Greatest Showman, Ready Player One, The Fox and the Hound, Flushed Away, and Battle Angel. Oh, that's a pretty exciting poll right there, am I right? Now, keep in mind that only patrons can access this poll. What is a patron? Don't worry, I'll explain. This is my Patreon. It's a site for my fans to make monthly donations to me. Those who donate are called Patrons. The money I receive goes towards funding my videos and serves as a supportive income for me. Patrons can donate as much as they want each month and stop donating any time. All donations are greatly appreciated, and in return for their patronage, patrons are given exciting rewards, depending on how much they donate, including their names credited in my main show, access to exclusive videos, and the chance to decide a review on my channel. I'm looking forward to finding out which film my patrons want me to do next on this show. Cheerio, folks.